One to one on the scoreboard. We got an even series on our hands, which means it is do or die for both of these teams. Continuing in Proving Ground, CLG Academy as Magical correctly, uh, you know, or corrected me earlier. This would now be their furthest run in Proving Grounds if they can take this win here. Immortal still chasing for that coveted top four that they have consistently gotten. And I'm happy that we actually get a game three column because when we were watching in that last game, just the narrative, the excitement, it just adds so much more weight to a game three when we go into this scenario. Game threes are so much better than just two O's, man. Like, it's not even close. Oh, so yeah. obviously both these teams have shown what they can do. They've shown some mistakes. They've shown kind of their strengths. So we'll see where the adaptations come from game three because personally that's my favorite part about series is that you get to see how teams adapt over time. Exactly. And uh, with that said, we're waiting for pick and ban of game number three. So to recreate a little bit of game two and help facilitate our conversation, summarizing what happened in that game, we're going to play a little game that we like to call hands check. This is one that I love playing when we have a guest on the show with us because we each get one partner. Cubby, you're partnered with me. Colomer, you got magical oh, on sorry. your team. I'm sorry, we're going to take so turns. <laughs> actually drawing uh through our own you know screen that we're going to send forward and uh me and Colmer have each given each other two moments from the last game that we have to draw Colmer, do you want to go first or would you rather me start us off uh i am totally fine with you going first so that way my terrible okay. drawing is not first on the screen all right so let's see it cubby don't hit me all right do not no hit promises. me right here uh i got uh 30 seconds on the clock i'm not keeping time but uh okay. we're just gonna start drawing all right Wow, I, I look... You, you're, you really should give me a mustache here. You look beautiful, uh, Cubby. Soraka Bananas. Oh, no. This is around the dragon. As... Okay. Hold on. We shorted... Oh! Uh, Joey shorted the per portal around Red Buff to try and make the play on the Tempered Fate uh, around the Baron. Yeah! Ding, 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 ding! Oh, Woo! It nice. looked like a dragon pit. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, but... It did I, look like a dragon pit. The, 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 it the was short red. Was I was good. trying to just say, like, red buff, you know? Yeah. Like, that, that was the goal right there. Woo! I got one! This is my first time ever getting a point in this game! Let's, Let's go! go. We're about to see your oh, wait, game? wait, no, actually, pr production, can you, can you send it back to, back to Cubby real quick? Real quick? I just okay. wanna, I just wanna, oh, wait, can, can I, can I cut this? Oh no, I, I don't know, I don't know how to do this. We're gonna put it on oh, my forehead I, like an advertisement? I might have spoken too soon. I wanna draw a mustache, but now, now I'm completely oh. inting the draft here. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. So Boom. Cubby. Oh Evil no, Cubby. it's, oh, it's too thin. It. Abort, abort, it's fine, it's fine. Send us back to four box, it's alright. We're just gonna make it work from there. No evil copy today, yeah. That's one point, that's one point that I, I got. Alright, Polymer, you're up next. Magical, you gotta guess this one. God. Magical, I, I have faith in you, okay? okay. Uh, that, at least I'm, one I'm of making us does. this literally... I'm making this literally as easy as possible. Uh, Zero. You know, where's I Phil? Where's Phil? No, 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 no. no. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll do this. I see. I see what you're yeah, doing. Yeah. An egg. <laughs> no. Plus, Please. Plus it, it is literally so that... Cool. Uh, here. Yes. Uh... <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll do a little bit of help. I love what the, the attempt is right now, and I'm just so satisfied when I know what it is. Okay, you know, so yeah. I'm confused Think by about the second colors. circle. Think yeah. about colors. You got 10 seconds. Yeah. There's red and there's... Is that blue? Red yes. and blue. Five. I'm, uh, I'm assuming uh, four, colors of guns, three, and uh, you can't yes, fight yes, against the yes. Helios. So the Midnight Vigil's yes, connecting yes, and dying. Okay, you got it. Uh, you know yes. what? I'll give it. Red, it was white, red white. Don't fight. I'll give it to you though. It was close enough. Right. Meat. That was supposed to be a person down here. Off in that game, guys. That was insane. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I, Good job, man. Uh, I'm proud of you. I, I, I will really... be honest. Part of it did get cut off, so I couldn't actually see what yeah, you were drawing yeah, on the bottom half. Bit. So I was like, it, it is, I okay. have no that idea my, what that is. <laughs> that was my terrible drawing of Aphelios. I'm really happy we didn't have to see that. It's fine. We're chilling. <laughs> Woo! I got a point. Uh, but Cubby, while I try to figure out how to actually delete this on my screen, talk about how good Meech was. I, uh, Meech was really sound in that game. I, I think the game won. Uh, Calmer, you brought up a good point when we got back on the desk. Like, COG, having Poppy plus Alistar into Azir, really tough for the later stages. And if Zeri doesn't have that obnoxious front line, you can fall victim to the range of Azir in, in, if the fights are shorter and you aren't able to utilize the, the poke that your W has before objective setups. So... I think that this time around, Meech had the humongous frontline on the Aphelios, healing of the Azir, and he cashed in. He played very well in that game. 
All right, you bought enough time. I, I'm ready. I'm ready for mine. So we're at one to one on the scoreboard right. right now. Both teams have one good, point. Good luck, good bud. job, guys. We're good luck. Okay. looking good out there. Gabby, are you ready? All right, as soon as I start See drawing, time, timer starts. Okay, let's try and find the center of the screen. All right, I was trying to and sneak in a head scratch here, but let's go. Dude, wait, you're cutting me in half? Is this okay. like two different faces? Is it Pong? Yeah, we're, this is like the. Uh, oh, hold on. Uh, LOL Esports logo. Oh, we split the map. Hold on. We oh, Kevy impacted all three lanes in game one and lost. Game two. Wait, we have an arrow now on this side. What? Should I give Kevy a hint or no? Yeah, give him hints, <laughs> please. Th th I think, th think I think of the champions from last game. Oh, it was the. the, the, the we were talking the, about they the. They stole the draft. We're talking about the same game here. Uh, oh, uh, Ophelios is here? Or Poppy is 0 2? Or Ophelios is here? won both games? I had kind of lost. I think I know it, but this one's hard. What what what, what do the champions from last. What is, uh, what is CLG's champions from last game? What are they very good at? Uh, it, I, I, it was I, early game for CLG I, last game, oh, and it eight. failed. That's they ran right. out of time. Six. Uh, uh, this time they scaled. Oh, I'm gonna give it to that him. I'm gonna give it to him. That was close enough, okay? So the answer was Palmer, lose lane win game for we... Orta Zero uh, and Ophelios. I, th yeah. I think Palmer. that Scaling. counted. We, we, we can't complain. We got a point last time. You said you did say no, you did I'm say it was complain. like That's all I, I, I saw the one and two, and I assume game one versus game two. But if this is oh. the same game, this makes more sense. Yeah. Same game. Yeah, I was trying to say like first half versus second half oh, kind of thing. Oh, like, that was that was rough. I, I would not yeah. have gotten that either. <laughs> I even thought this through in my head. I was like, this is exactly how it's going to make the most sense. <laughs> Probably not the best, I but think, uh, I'll take it. I think one of the interesting parts about this, uh, this series so far is that I think we've seen Chad and Kevy be able to find and match each other a lot in the jungle. Uh, and it's kind of neutralized both of the poppies for the scaling comps. So I, I, th I think some credit due to each jungler for being able to actually trade out plays instead of just having dives go one way or the other. Uh, I think that really helped both the scaling teams. And we'll see if that continues in game three. Scaling All right, uh, Calmer, that means you. You got one more to go. Yep. Uh, so we All got two right. points. Uh, no pressure or anything. Nice work, but this is already the most scoring that we've is, ever had on this show. You can I just take a tiebreaker? Can I just get, take a guess before you even draw a single thing? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Is honestly, this I, be, I have faith in you. Is this going to be the Hextech Dragon Soul that was secured and the fight afterwards? No! By <laughs> Did I no! actually? Did I actually? No way, did I yeah, actually? Yeah. Come on, yeah, man. That's dope. How do you do this? Big brain! There's Big no brain! Way. No way! Okay, ah! all right. Oh my god. I was gonna change it. I it was between that or Arrow not dying until the Nexus. If he hadn't died at all all game, I would have said like Arrow not dying. But it, what are you oh, talking about? I, Magical so OP, man. This guy's a B1 champion. Look at him go. <laughs> Big brain. That was disgusting. Magical's a B1 champ for sure. All right, you, you know what? You know what? I'm just gonna say I think that we just lost Cubby. I don't yeah, think we yeah, can you actually call him. <laughs> I can't. I can't beat a mind reader. Uh, you no. know. As someone uh, that was hoping you know things work out in the long game, I I, I can't I can't beat that. You know, it just uh, just read my high five magical. I'm actually gonna request something here. Yeah, uh, let's, let's let the uh, high five happen. There you go. All right, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna request make make magical full screen, just for a little bit here. Uh, I, I hate speech. to do this, I really do, but uh, we we gotta make it happen. We get we gotta we gotta. Oh oh, I'm doing the wrong thing here. Do you, okay. do you have any victory speeches here, Matt Magical? No no, that's the wrong uh, caller. Vi yeah, victory speeches. Give me a speech. Yeah. Um, Everyone is inferior to me. I'm the biggest brain there ever was. Uh, yep. Everyone should bow down in my glory uh, with how great I am. And uh, how do you draw brain? Oh wait, I I I remember. Kangas, you know why this happened, right? Because I gave too easy of a prompt. No, this because you like asked the colorblind guy hair. to play a drawing game. That's so mean, dude. <laughs> What? Maybe that wasn't the best idea either. Uh, but I, you're just happy that you know you got magical here with the big brain. I, I don't I know what I'm drawing at this point. I don't know this either. Is, this is oh, not like, a brain. It looks like a cauliflower. I or was something trying like that. to make like the middle part. That, uh, you know what? Uh, whatever. There you go. Should've There's magical's big brain. You should have thrown everybody. a crown on me instead. 
All right, maybe, maybe Colomer can do that. All right, Nessie, man. No, okay, well, oh, we there fun. you go. That's it for our, uh, our our hands check as we're ready for now pick and ban of game number three. Everything is on the line here. So I want to take some time to kind of re-put ourselves into the shoes, the pressure of some of these players and talk about each side. Cubby, I'm going to give you the side of CLG Academy and just explain again for anybody just tuning in. Maybe they're just checking this out. What's at stake here for these players and why does this win mean so much for them? Well, the season is on the line. Uh, if you win this game, you move on to a best of five. That could put you in top four, could get you on that LCS stage, whereas if you lose, you're out. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think for CLG, this is a team where, you know, the top side, new coming into this split, Kevy late coming in. It's good to see CLG actually have a couple plans where I feel like they're playing as a team, coming together. That's something we asked for from each of the junglers today. It really feels like they're the engines that make their teams run. I think that Kevy marking Chad was really good. It slowed down IMC in that mm. snowballing game uh, comp. But I'm really curious what side each team selects uh, for this next one or where IMT decides to go. I think Azir and Aphelios are, and especially Azir, starting to become very defining in, in this set. And that's a big pick I'm looking out for in the next draft. Magical, you gave me Immortals, and then I want Colomer's opinions from the GM side of what it means right. maybe for staff to pick up a win here. But for the players on Immortals Academy, give me the stakes! Uh, well, first, can I just talk about how they're going to win? <laughs> sure. That they works, pick red, too. They pick red side. Anyway, so that's the, how they win. And then looking at, like, anything else, you know, it, it means a lot. They are a team that twice in a row beforehand had gotten top four, so it would be their third time if they can get uh, continue mm -hmm. to win. It's legacy. Colmer, I'm here picking ban, is about to be ready. So what are your thoughts on this final match? Who's going to take it? Uh, whatever team doesn't give the enemy mid laner their best champ. Uh, I think both both games of the series that the team has won, they gave away the best champion to the enemy mid laner. Uh, maybe just don't Pretty's, do that. Pretty's Talia just lost. It, it's 9-3 and three now. That's a rare oh, wait, one. Oh, wait. Uh, then whatever team uh, picks Heimerdinger's on a bot lane. That's my favorite. <laughs> Heimerdinger's on a... Hey, you know what? I can, I can respect that. <laughs> Arrow, Arrow okay. and, uh, actually played it once with Joe. Oh, what so. did, what yeah. about Cassiopeia <laughs> Amumu? Ooh. All right, uh, no, we're not going to talk about that one because Pink and Band anyway. is ready now. So I don't know, Magical. Maybe like some it. of your crazy theories will come to life. <laughs> Elimination is on the line for each of these teams. One more game. We'll punch your ticket into the top six. Magical, Gubby, take it away. I feel like I, my brain shouldn't be questioned when it comes to what's good or not because obviously I have such a big brain that everyone now has to admit to. So we look at this game and we look at the sides. That's the big thing for me is that Immortals actually chose Wait. to be on blue side and look wow. at the bans. Azir was banned away by CLG, not wanting to have that as the first pick for IMT because I bet they would have done so. And Aphelios was banned away from IMT too. So. It really is changing the landscape of this draft as CLG showing a reset comp early into Talia, taking that Viego and the Ari. Very important that you get early kills and can continue to snowball, deathball a fight for CLG. We'll see how Immortals takes uh, some things to maybe defend against that. I gotta say, Poppy in this matchup, it, it's on the table for Chad. It is. I think that Poppy could be really good into both Ari and Viego. I feel like now both junglers have been uh, spited by picking the Poppy previously. So they're like, I don't want to play it Close now, time. but it would be so good into this composition. It's, it is one of those things, but I like this look from Arrow and from Joey. Taking their classic. They, this is what they really had popped up on at the beginning of the split. This is what I kind of wanted to see into the setup from COG last game, really committing to punishing whatever jungler COG was going to go for. Calista Renata on Blue's side, it's all about playing for those bot side camps. And so I think Immortal is very aggressive posturing, trying to dominate the early game. A COG can grab a marksman to try and neutralize that. Okay. And it will be Varus, who we have seen reemerge into the meta a little bit. Uh, should be on hit. Now I'm expecting a TK ban, most likely from Immortals, to try and Expected. take some of that safety away from the Varus. And jungle bans across the board, as neither jungler is showing. I am very curious to see what we actually That's have for the jungle matchup, because I'm expecting just full jungle bans. It may be the top 10 for IMT, but I'm expecting mostly the jungle to be focused. If you ban TK as IMT, you might buy yourself a Vi, uh, Vi ban as well. That could be very interesting to see. Right. So there, there's a lot of wiggle room for Immortals, depending on what they want to ban. A CLG with that Trundle ban expected, the poppy still wide open, could be taken away. But an Ash ban coming in and taking that away from Breezy. Let's okay. keep in mind, the last series that they played in, 
He popped off on that Ash support, landing nearly every single arrow. It's pretty good. Uh, and it will not be the Vi being taken away, but instead the Jarvan, something that is a Chad special. And I oh. do like the Orn takeaway. I, I, I think that Orn having that big tank to play with a Varus on hit is what we were expecting. Really good. Uh, and now, grab support. Not going to be a Tom Kench. Instead, will be a Leona or Breezy. So CLG actually taking that mid-jungle duo that IMT won their first game with in the Viego and Leona and playing it right. for themselves. That's what, that made me go ooh right there just because that is quite the turnaround that we have in this game. Grabbing that for themselves and I will say it, it makes the poppy even more likely because now you deny that engage as well. <laughs> There's so many reasons to get it, but they don't. They ooh. go for Xin Shao and they go for skirmishing. Chad wants to fight. Go figure, right? Uh, I know, right? So... Chad fighting? Whoa. Surprise. I Zin's a lot of early power, and we will see if you can cash in on the Zin's outpick. I think that it, it has the potential to be very good into Varus if you are able to actually attack. Uh, so I, I want to see what the game plan is for Chad, and if the bot lane of Immortals can help support Chad and get this Viego behind. Because when I see Clis Renata, I want to see you try and play for that priority in the lane to go take away the enemy quadrant that you're attacking on the blue side that would be the blue buff quadrant or CLG on the red side. Really going to keep my eyes to see if Immortals can execute upon that early. Now that Sejuani is showing. Honestly, would not be surprised. Nar? I know there have been some Nar nerfs, but that is Jenkins' most comfortable yeah. champion. Nar looks damn good this game. Could be the grab, but instead, Nar, more early or power. Early power going back to what they tried in game one, seeing if it can work on the red side this time around. More resets to their name when it comes to those mid-game fights. I got to say, I really like the Zin Zhao this game. I, I think that as Zin, you get a lot of value. Oh, uh, yeah. Going Just into said this 22. Comp. Yeah. Uh, and I'm curious because when you have Callista Renata, you know, I think that what we've seen TL Academy do so well in this split is using this pick to get something else for your team in the early game. But when I look at Zin, you can't attack the bot lane. You can't attack the top side with Sejuani. Try and utilize that permafrost passive to really take Renekton out of the game. And COG, all about early aggression. This is Honestly, a comp that they might have picked in spring uh, with Renekton plus Ari and this Viego. So I think CLG, they have that early aggression in game one. We're not able to turn it into a win. This time around, we'll see if they're able to do that and push forward in this tournament. Well, that is what it is all down to, right? This is the do or die game. We're both squads. And last time, a best of three, Immortals Progressive Academy versus CLG Academy was in the upper bracket. There wasn't as much stake yeah. on the line in that previous one. But you know what the big pick was that made things go in Immortals' favor? What was that? Joey's Renata. He's got it again in this game. That he does. It's one yeah. of those powerful picks. I'm glad you talk, talked about because we kind of highlighted it before. That Joey on Renata, he's someone who loves this champion, played it before a lot. It was cool, and anyone else played. that picked up. Now, let's load up onto the Rift for our last game for one of these two Academy teams. Immortals Progressive Academy take on CLG Academy. One team looking to replicate spring, the other team looking to see if they can deny history for a second time. And I think for CLG, looking at this composition that they have, I really want to keep our eyes on Breezy. Okay. Because I think that Breezy, this split, someone that you were really hyping up, really excited about, Mad Magical. I think we, he played so well this split. Yeah, I, we talk so much about supports, the likes of Awa and Busio, both very well deserved, but Breezy, I think, has had a fantastic split. And his Leona, when he's able to get out of lane in Rome, can be very powerful. And look at the lanes that he can go to. He has Renekton, he has an Ari, he can work with a Viego. Right. A lot of eyes on a Breezy to see if he can neutralize this very powerful bot lane draft from IMT, and if they can try and turn things in CLG's favor early. CLG realized that they were going for the same play they had done last time, which is the late invade, but this time it wasn't with the Xin Zhao. Just looking to see if they can probably get some wards down into the jungle, spot out where Kevy is. And I'm glad he kind of brought up Breezy as a player. I feel like he's yeah. been an unsung hero for CLG. I mean, you even look back to last spring when he looked the most powerful for the team when they were winning, it was off the backs of his roam, where he was mm -hmm. the one looking to make these plays for the team in every single lane. Mostly Doklas as well. How he attacked mm -hmm. the other lanes around bot. Something that we'll see if Breezy can step up and maybe do this game. But one of the things that sticks out to me early 
It's the fact that we have both junglers working towards that bot side. And that tells me that Chad really wants to get up in the face of Cabi early. Right. And it's expected. When you play the Xin Zhao against Viego, you want an early skirmish. You're trying to force his hand early on into the game. And with Kevi playing Diego, one of the two champions that we kind of highlighted as being some of his best performing champions, the Wukong being the other one that was permanently banned this entire series from him. This is his time to kind of show why he was picked up for Academy, brought over from the LCO oh boy. after his performance in MSI. Okay, so Chad, I was setting up early. Chad had options. I wanted to see maybe playing with Callista Renata, trying to attack the bot lane camps, but instead it is Chad wrapping around towards the top side, but Jenkins dropped a ward. So Chad can't go for that gank anymore, no. and now is relegated to go going mid. mid. Hey, this actually might work out. Dash is on to Triple. Triple can have the flash over the wall, but doesn't even bother. Knows that he's already dead to right, so Pretty picks up first blood. Chad and three wave ganks. Something that we have seen this entire Academy split, and in this do or die game three for Immortals, it comes up big for them, as all of a sudden, Pretty is off to a good start, and Kevi's scared. He can't even start his blue buff because of the bot lane pressure from IMT. Thing is, you never, ever can forget about Chad and level three ganks. He always will go for them. Top lane, a little bit of a skirmish back and forth between the two sides. Oh. Vital took a bad trade there, but so did Jenkins with that ignite utilized by Vital. The piggy has to sit under the turret at the moment. That's <laughs> a scary crocodile coming at it. Renekton seeing a lot more of him. Hey, have you uh, ever seen a wild boar, stuff. though? Uh, yeah, actually, I have. It's, it's, uh, scary. it's not, yeah, no, it, it is scary, but wild the crocodile... boars are very... I don't know. I'd rather fight a crocodile. All I have to do is hold its mouth what? shut. What? Yeah. I, I just saw an article yesterday that a crocodile ate, like, an 80-year-old woman. You're, you're on Team Crocodile? I, I will fight a crocodile. Okay, well, I won't at the fight moment... a boar. A boar's gonna gore me, and I don't want to fight a boar. I'll fight a you crocodile. Know, you know, we could have another Game of Thrones reference to uh, not wanting to fight boars. Some spoilers in Season 1, but moving forward. House of Dragons coming out soon. Not sponsored, but kind of. <laughs> anyway. Chad gonna be destroying crabs, uh, which I feel like Chad is very comfortable fighting at this point. I'm surprised Almost... you didn't make that into Game of Thrones reference. I, we're working on it, you know? Uh, I, it, it is once a game that we get the paycheck stipend. Okay, not, okay. Not, not twice, yeah. Okay, is, well, so. right now Chad is invading. Looking Taking to do what he rafters. did in the last time. He's got Gonna be able to smite it away. That's big. Debbie realizes, like, oh, well, there's not much I can do. I can't scare our Mrs. Zin Zhao at this point in the game. Really like Chad finding proactive plays. And, Ooh. oh, that actually doesn't spot Kevy. That oh, is a little Kevin bit knows. unlucky as Chad will have to get out. But, hey, still got the Raptor camp, got out okay. Chad can return to his camps, but does need to sneak in another base. I thought for a second Chad might have started a fight, but Pretty was resetting. So he didn't want to actually have the yeah. chance that triple rotates up before he can actually kill Kevy. But Kevy flashed over the wall. He's looking for this play top lane, but he's spotted out by the scuttle crab. Oh so God, Jenkins, Kevy. even though Jenkins is going pretty aggressive on this one on a vital, vital, he might be able to survive, Hold or on. can he? They just had that flash over the wall play come in from Kevy to catch out vital. So he had no idea he was there. Really clever play from Kevy, taking a page out of something I'd expect from uh, Chad to do. No, that's As... something from LPL, man. I remember yeah, saying that. that. Too. Uh, what was it? Jug God was a crazy jungler for uh, Thunder Talk last year. He just saw as a sub. And he flashed over twice in a game over this wall exactly to make sure that he could have this play afterwards. This is baller from Kevin. <laughs> yes. Hey, he knows that Vital's lane state. It's doomed. Jenkins is doing a nice job of holding it here. Heavy flashes instantly. Spotted on the crab, doesn't matter. Vital is dead at this point, doesn't have the flash on the Sejuani. And love to see Kevy doing something proactive early. Was set behind from Ch by Chad, but this is a good response from him to make sure that his strong side top laner gets something early. This is what you want from Kevy too. This is how he has played successfully in the academy circuit. He has played for setting up his oh. lanes, and now Chad has to answer somewhere else. Looking for the bot lane play. The flash comes in from Breezy, but the wind nice. becomes lightning. Really well make done. sure that Arrow takes his first kill. Really like the W flash there from Chad, just guaranteeing that he is able to find something himself. And man, we were asking for each of these junglers who go for risky plays on each of these teams. Sometimes can cost their team's games. But in this game three, each of these junglers has found good things early I, for their squads. Love to I see both these guys every, online. Every game, I feel like the series, yeah. both of them have been, been some performing good moves. incredibly well. Love to see it from Chad, someone that I feel like hasn't 
We haven't seen the best out of Chad in this split, but keep in mind this guy has top forward each proving grounds that he was in, winning with 100 Thieves as a sub last summer on their academy squad. In this game three, Chad has really found two great plays for his team. As well, he was able to get some gold in to Pretty and Arrow, two members of the team that are vital for the team. Even though Vital did die top lane himself and is pretty far behind Jenkins, it's more of the tank matchup that you want. You want to just have your Sejuani get levels, get a couple items to be a beefy front line. Pretty finds a nice trade on the triple there. And with the Spellbook, does have access to the cleanse in case uh, Ari decides to go all in level 6. Like that mm -hmm. tech coming out of a lot of our mid laners using Spellbook to get out of some matchups that, you know, you can just take combat summoners at times that uh, enemy mids are looking to power spike and kill you. With that said, there is bot river priority for Joey. He was looking very aggressively on the Meech, but Meech will respect it. Has six. No play for Immortal Scat. Now, I'm kind of just looking at this game. You know something we didn't really get to highlight? We didn't really get a highlight beforehand. I, I, I see you. I know you want to look at uh, what's happening around the Rift Herald, but I want to really quickly try this to see if risky. I can fit this in. Immortals have only faced amateur teams so far in the Proving Grounds. Taking down CLG Academy, the team that was ranked one spot above them in the standings, taking yeah. the sixth seed while they had to take the seventh. Oh, we're going It'll be for a this. huge statement for IMT, and it will be a fight around the Rift Hero. The flash oh, no. comes in from Jenkins. Chad's still alive. Does he, got he secure it. it? He does, and they might get the kill on the Kevy on the other side as well. It's pretty. It's dead. Oh, we got a reset. Kevy got the reset. Or did he? Look at where Joey is. Joey's trying to save the day with Breezy on the other side, and here Arrow's comes here. as well. Everyone He's got double buffs. showing up to the party. No flash, Only Breezy. Beach was not invited to the fight, so now Breezy will fall at the hands of Pretty. And it's a risky play from Chad and Immortals, but he smites the Rift Herald away, and IMT wins the fight as they had the full commit. All members came up. Awkward game state now as Vital does have the Rift in Ooh, his tar. pockets, and pretty... Oh, that's that close. That, that cleanse wasn't came for up the cleanse. Exactly. Yeah. He would have died. Oh, man. Now, I'm really curious to see what Chad does, because the Rift Herald is on this Sejuani. You want to use this Rift Herald to try and funnel Arrow, try and funnel one of your damage-dealing carries. But now they're going to have to do it on Vital. That said, take a look at the replay. Chad was waiting to hit the eye until he could get it. Gets it at, with an auto attack. Rift Herald, game three, man. We're throwing down Ooh. everything. Kevy was nearly able to survive through this fight. Was able to get a soul reset. Got his ult off before he died if he gets another kill. Kevy lives, and this could be disastrous, but then it's not the case. And Immortal is sending up more members. They steal the Rift Herald away for themselves against the Renekton topside and end up with the fight, too. Getting the fight, now you can see the lanes swapping, and it answered towards that. A bit surprising, but then again, there's two minutes until the, the next dragon will spawn. Nothing really to play on the bot side, nor the top side. Arrow just wants to get some more farm, try to see if he can continue to get out of control, where Meech isn't going to be able to provide enough damage, even if he goes for the on hit. It does look to be, uh, we've seen King in this tournament playing uh, Way to the Rune King and the Kraken Slayer, or Shield Bow. Looks to be a potential angle for Meech. He could go Shield Bow first still with these items, but uh, both the Vamp Scepter and the Pickaxe build into each Shield Bow and Orc. So we'll see what the decision ends up being for Meech. But Australian Lane State here uh, will end up netting Immortals a crash mid as Vital was able to walk up, drop the Herald mid, and actually funnel some points into a damage dealer. Now Immortals mm -hmm. with mid push, they're hovering this top side. Trying to beat Kevy to the punch. Didn't Do zone him. out triple. Spotted him out. Did not actually see off. him with the wind becomes lightning. They saw him when he left that mist. So they were able to correctly call off the play. Not really looking for anything further. Or did they? They're looking for these resets as Arrow. Looks to get the wave set up for a crash. So Pretty's level 9. He has perma push mid at the moment. And looks like one base for the bot winner is CLG. But not the other. As Oh boy, that TP, oh, TP. is aggressive. Really? But it's, it's not an aggressive one. It's to save the life of Breezy, so not more gold okay. goes into Arrow's pockets. I can understand that, but it does mean they lack that summoner. Honestly, the CLG playing this out okay. Uh, Meech was able to go bot, so he's going to pick up some scraps too under that turret. And again, CLG are under a lot of pressure at the moment from Immortals, who, with this Talia sitting 2-0-1, pretty Talia at that as well. His ability to get push mid and hover the side lanes really pressuring CLG. So I think that solution, it might take them out of the running for this dragon, but at least they were able to, able to pick up a lot of gold and XP of ways that they would have dropped 
afterwards and would have dropped support too. So, okay solution here from CLG. I think it's an okay solution, but it's also not stopping what's going to be powerful. Yeah. And that is going to be pretty in these fights. It's, even though they did get the clear here mid lane so they can rotate down towards the dragon. Oh boy. Jenkins Hubbard uh, for this dragon. Vital has TP, but it's not yet empowered. So CLG, they had bot priority. We're able to get pushed mid. They're going to yeah. take this dragon, but do a mortals fight afterwards. Uh, it looks like they're not going to even bother. Don't even want to worry wow. about it. They didn't know exactly where Jenkins was. Didn't realize that he was rotating back towards the top lane at that point. That was a really nice series of events from CLG. They, they just ran immortals around the map a bit. Taking that dragon from themselves. Utilizing the strength of the Renekton as Jenkins. That hover from top to mid. Dropping that wave. What? That's why CLG were able to get the dragon for themselves. And that slows down the game plan for IMT. Really well done here by the side of CLG. In this game where it's the do or die, you got to look for plays like that, especially when you know that Immortals are going to look for plays. Both compositions are built around having good successes in mid-game, even if there's some scaling aspects that CLG can fall back on. They want to make sure they're getting that... Uh, getting Kevy, getting tripled to tag team together, getting the Ari to rotate around the map with Kevy to look for picks initially so they can start getting a lead back away from Immortals. Man, COG picking up so many points there. Just the raw strength of mm -hmm. Jenkins being good. But that really is the lead, the power point on the map here for the Ooh. side of COG is triple. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, he's going to have to use that summoner spellbook heal. Yep. Using that just to get away, and now Pretty, because he was able to crash in the minion wave, rotates around with Kevy. Well, onto Kevy, sorry, with Chad. We're going to see if they can steal away this red buff. They're in a position. Smite <laughs> is stolen. Well Chad done. takes the red. That's big. Chad has beaten Kevy to the Sunder, and love to see Chad getting up in the face of their enemy junglers and trying to punish. This is what Chad does so well when he gets a lead. He is ruthless in trying to push it. He will try and push it every angle. And that can sometimes go sour for IMT, but when it's good, it's great. And that steal from Chad not only leads to red buff going into his hands, but they can use this to pressure top turret as well. As IMT looking to knock down the first brick in their favor. Now, I want to give some context to the, how important this game is for both teams. Immortals having only faced an amateur team so far in the proving grounds to take down a team that was seated higher than them in CLG, an academy team at that, and an elimination match could show that this team is something that you have to give full respects when it's a clutch moment. And looks like both teams want to fight this rift. I really have to keep our eyes on Jenkins. He is still level 10, but if he nets an early level 11, that could be massive. As Renekton at this point of the game around Rift Herald is such a powerful champion and Jenkins mm -hmm. has a lead. See if he can use it. Vital isn't there. There is the Unleashed TPs this time around. So with the fight around the Rift Herald, look to see who can secure it. Is it going to beat Chad getting it for the second time? The Weaver's Wall on the other side. Vital's on the other side as well. Jumping over the wall, trying to see if he can detach to anybody. But the cleanse comes in from each to be able to survive. Jenkins is in the back line. Trying to get the damage no like But Arrow takes him down with a wren so that he is gone with the eye secured by Immortals as well. CLG back to the drawing boards. Kevy was split by Pretty, and that Weaver's Wall locked CLG in, but Jenkins went too deep. No one from CLG could follow up as IMT. They take the Herald, take the fight. Pop now they're going to take mid-outer. They're getting so much gold into their pockets off these mid-game plays, Matt Magical. They might be able to get two crashes as well as Breezy went aggressive on a vital, forcing out the bailout. He will die in the fight, okay. but there's a little bit of damage put into the back line. The charge, no. Kevy will make sure to stop that from happening twice. That was a decent response from CLG. Nice use of the stopwatch from Breezy to bait Vital in. As Vital does go down, but still, look at that gold graph. 3k gold in favor of Immortals. They've taken the first two towers of the game. They're a, dr a dragon short from uh, being perfect on the objectives as well. Let's take another look. Look at the zoning. So Kevy gets split here by Pretty. Uh, as they the hostile takeover really puts CLG in a pickle. Pretty keeps Breezy Kevy busy on the back half. Meech can never walk up and auto attack because the team's a little split and Jenkins, no one was able to help him out. So it's just a shutdown on the Renekton and a Rift Herald going over to IMT. Them playing out that fight though was great. Ooh, as Jenkins takes a lot of damage oh my from God, Pretty. Talia, man. It's disgusting, man. It's so good. 
It might be 9-3 oh now because of the loss beforehand, but he was playing absolutely amazing, and you can see why four members have been sent by CLG top lane looking for pretty, but the answer is already there from IMC. They've already got members ready to collapse, looking for the play. Breezy taking a little bit of damage, missing the Zenith Blade with the size of tough, getting a lot of damage back. Throw another rock, throw another rock, look for the handshake. They've oh got a God. killing spree for Arrow as he takes away the kill. Kevy and Triple can do nothing but watch. Man, pretty looking like uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi there, just pelting the enemy with rocks as... Uh, yeah, uh, you know what? I don't care about spoilers. It's it's too late. Uh, if it's spoiled, it's spoiled. But anyway. He's got the high ground, man. I mean, what, yeah. can, what else can there, we there say? We go. There we go. We can take the main Just back. rock after rock. Rock after rock, high ground after high ground. It all comes around right now for Immortals Progressive Academy. As they've gotten themselves that 3,500 gold lead, the, sec the third dragon of the game, their second, will be secured in Cloud Dragon Jenkins. It might be in the vicinity. But I don't think you have the miracle here. Now you get fight. something like Callista with the rent stacks already there on top of the dragon. This fight should be secured pretty easily with Kevy on the other side. It's going to be secured. Now they look for the fight on the other side with the hostile oh, takeover getting on the board. Takeover. They got a lot of damage. But that's a fate's call to save the life of the support only. Sacrificing the boar, the cow will be taken out. Or cow boar, whatever. I Honestly, I think that COG had to push there. Because when I look at this comp... How can you deal with Callista in the later stages of the game, given some of the tools that IMT has around this Callista and the lack of damage oh, from COG is now pretty... They're not done! Flash oh, away from flash. Meat. Oh my god. He had to flash that one. The reactions that we talk about out of Mage and now Chad in a little bit of danger as the Zenith and Blade connect. Chad should be fine though. That Crescent Strike danger? made sure that Meech couldn't do anything at all to attack him. That flash from Meech was so good. Because not only did he get over that small wall, he also had to get over the Weaver's wall, too. He was able to get it over both, as saves himself, yep. prevents the play on Immortals. And again, this comp, I think it's really difficult to deal with Kalista. And COG's comp, as this game goes on, it's such low range, it's going to run out of gas. So I appreciate COG trying to throw it at IMT here. As they have a numbers advantage, they lose the objective, but they are able to push and find something on the back half. Nothing else, though, as that was the only kill. Did deny some camps, but still, it's IMT. 3k gold lead and another dragon to their name. The thing is, too, you get the kill on a vital, and it's almost like, so so what? You killed the tank. Bravo. You still got shut down that you need to pick yeah. up off uh, pretty. Shut down you need to pick up off of arrow. Those are the members that if you can't attack, it means nothing just killing vital, as he is just going to be there to be the front line for the team. I've, I've watched plenty of Live Sandbox this split. To know that top plane does not matter, as Vital is doing his best of impression. Might be behind on the scoreboard, but the utility, what he brings in team fights, will be what the team needs exactly. moving forward. And with that pressure that they have from you know, just being powerful enough, having the front line nearby them, they take down this tier two, uh, tier one turret in the bot lane. More gold influx into the pockets of IMT Progressive. You can see where that's spread around. I mean, the biggest lead. There's got to be Arrow over Meech, which is uncharacteristic because this entire series so far, Meech has been the big benefactor of all the plays that Kevy's tried to do, except for this game. And Arrow's Callista, it, it's been fantastic. And again, this Callista, who is going to deal with this in the later stages of the game? It's got to be a crazy setup uh, from Breezy, Triple, Jenkins to try and get on this Callista who has all the peel of a Talia has a hostile takeover uh, as well to just throw down and make sure that no one can free hit this Callista and that damage over time is going to be massive on this champion that is accelerated, still very strong. We will see if Arrow can carry this through to victory as it's been a good start here for Immortals. Trying to move on and make another top four run. Uh, something they were able to do last split, something that Chad has only done since he has entered Academy. And very successful in his time in the Academy Sphere, despite being on two different teams for both 2021 and 2022. Here with the same team that he had last time, nearly the same team, a couple different changes. Same banner. Look to make the same banner, look to replicate the same success over the team that they had knocked down the first place seed of CLG Academy in spring 2022. And it, with, I, I gotta be, I even mention this one. CLG have yet to actually been, be in this kind of position in the Proving Grounds. Oh, the boy. pressure that is on them at this point in the game as they try to escape from danger, flashing over the wall, using everything possible just so Triple can get away. 
I actually really like that alt from Vital. As... Literally, he's using literally everything just to get away. <gasps> oh. Ooh, triple. Able to get out just barely. Uh, that alt from Vital didn't connect, but it did force the flash and the TP in the end from triple. So that's a win for IMT. Those are two big tools down right before this dragon that is soul point for Immortals. They're looking to keep the game, pace game control in their favor, shoving down mid. See if COG, a lot was burned by IMT. Breezy posturing the look. Oh, the handshake connects, forcing a flash from Breezy oh, with TP, charm TP. on top of Chad. Chad, Chad's... he needs to survive. The hostile takeover didn't do anything. Here's Jenkins in the back line. Chad trying to get away. He had to flash to make sure that he get a little bit of the distance with the face call. Renekton's knock big. Him off Jenkins. Renekton might be big, but he's oh. taken down by when becomes the lightning. Barely showing up just to get Krill credit. As Pretty hit by the charm is not afraid. Flashing in, looking for Pretty. reach. Pretty on to Leah. You can't stop him. And that flash is so big from Pretty because taking another member down, that enables IMT to actually look at this Baron as Vital is playing Bodyguard. He, his job is to keep Kevy out. He's so tanky. It's a Callista smite. I think IMT's just gotten Baron. They got in the Baron, they got Glacial Prison barely off of cooldown for Vital to make sure that there is no way Kevy can get inside of the pit. And right now, Immortals. Back against the wall, the clutch team, they had the same momentum going up against 100 Thieves next the other day. And against CLG, an academy team, their first one they faced in the Proving Ground so far, they are not looking to fall just yet. And this is a split fight. CLG, this TP from Renekton is in a great spot. But the way that Joey and Arrow were able to play around and peel for it is so good in this fight as, again, Walking backwards, walking through all the Talia rocks, the work ground. It, the, it's so difficult to get through Talia. COG not able to continue to push forward in the fight. Pretty flashes to make sure they net a bonus kill on the back half. And now Immortals, they have a Baron. They just got soul point to their name. They have a 5k gold lead. And they're looking to shut down COG in this best of three. Shutting them down, continuing their march in the lower bracket to look for top four and try to face off against the number one seed again like they did it in spring, but this time being at Team Liquid Academy in the lower bracket. As long as they can secure oh. victory here with Breezy caught out, dead. Oh, man. Nice rend as Triple, he will survive. Chad fights with Kevy and Triple in the mid lane. He's gotta be a little bit careful. There's a crossing guard and they've got Kevy to right. He's golden, but there's no escape for him. He's bounced around this entire time and finished off by Chad getting revenge in this game. Triple dodging away, but IMD fully in control of the map. Again, COG, this short-range composition playing that into Talia Kalista. It's difficult. There's just not enough stats that they have to get through the work ground, everything that this Talia throws at you, and then Arrow accelerated on this Kalista, just doing so much damage. I think this comp's too much for CLG. And uh, again, this team... Oh, no, oh, man. Breezy. Same spot. It was caught out. It was the... Easy play for Joey with that handshake, and now that he is dead, mm. this game is over. Immortals progressive, cracking another inhibitor turret and inhibitor in the mid lane while CLG look to see what defenses they can mount to get back in this game. But with an 8k gold lead for IMP 25 minutes into the game, it is dire at best. And Immortals, their second round Robin of Academy, I think, was close to the worst that we had of any team. Looking at this bounce back, they're having in Proving Grounds again, these players really coming together. And I think that this aggressive game plan from Chad, their ability to play with and around it this game was the big difference in a game where the scaling won, game one and two, the aggression won in this one from Immortals was very clean. And you know what other team had a similar story? in the last split was 100 Thieves Academy. Immortals looking to replicate what 100 had done in spring here in the, the summer proving grounds of 2022 and taking down a team that they had toppled in spring itself. Now IMC looking to make sure they book their ticket into that best of five stage. They were the ones that took down FlyQuest in a very close best of five in spring. We will see FlyQuest next. That's what got them their tickets into the top four. As the last inhibitor turret falling in favor of Immortals here. Without a fight even being there for CLG, they get the charm on a uh, Chad. As Chad has to use the Crescent Guard to get out of there. But they've gotten what they came for. 
They've got nearly everything, and they even pulled Greasy back into the fight, looking to see what else they can get on a Jenkins as he's looking with Kevin for the side, but he got hit by the hostile takeover, the flash away. Triple does shut down Chad. This could be the saving grace for CLG. The defense that they can mount now, if they completely continue this force, but they gotta be careful. Their base is already in shambles. The flash in, pretty. It's always pretty on Talea, baby. Hold on, Kevin. Can he get reset? reset? Oh no! Not. It's Arrow taking him down, making a triple kill for Arrow, hunting down the remaining members of CLG in their Ooh. base. He wants that Penta. He wants to take this game. The red stacks are there. He's Arrow. got a quadra kill to his name, even if it's unofficial. Game three, the clutch factor of IMT coming through to take down the team that had topped them in the summer split. They will continue to march forward and face off against the number one seed in the top six here in Proving Grounds. 12-15 Kalista, Arrow's making it look the same as 12-14 as he flies that KT banner and Immortals move forward. And this is a team, their second round Robin the Academy, five and 13. They slid down the standings throughout the season, but we knew what this team could do from their top four performance, from the core that they had with Arrow playing with this team quite a bit for the spring season, Vital coming in, trying to be that role player again. It really feels like Immortals are starting to put things together at the right time, and I love that game. The early game plans that we always praise Chad for can sometimes be his Achilles heel, his biggest strength and greatest weakness that time around. The way that the team was able to play around Chad and the angles that Chad found was fantastic. And they get victory. It's honestly incredible to see. There's got to be some sort of clutch factor when it comes to Immortals. When their backs are up against the wall is when they look the strongest. And everyone clutched out that game. I, I I know that Vital was very far behind, but what Immortals sacrificed topside, putting like making sure that their bot lane was ahead, their jungler was ahead, their mid laner was ahead, that first gank that Pretty had on the triple. Triple got the first gank in game two. He ran with it and carried CLG to a win. This time around, Pretty on that Talia, pushing that pick to 10 and 3. He got the first gank in his favor, and Pretty went off in that game too. Immortals come together at the right time, making it real exciting here to lower bracket for Proving Grounds. And they move on to face off against Team Liquid Honda Academy in uh, the first best <laughs> hey, we'll of fives that we'll have. Everyone's going to say, we'll see. But again, yeah. don't ever count out the clutch factor that IMT Progressive have to themselves. Well, we say goodbye to CLG Academy. They fall just short in the same spot they had had last time in spring with a 2-1 loss as well. Almost exactly like before, history continues to repeat itself. But we're going to get ready for our interview. And we're going to toss it to a break. And when we come back, we'll have the victorious IMT here with us. So make sure you stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome for our post-series interview. I have the one and only Immortals Academy, Chad, for our Verizon post-game interview. Congratulations on the win, man. That was well-deserved. Thank you, thank you. Hello, hello. Uh, I want to start with something that was a little interesting to us. I know the casters brought it up. Uh, and it's a pick that you're not known for. The Xin Zhao, coming out of nowhere, a champion that, again, like, even when it's been popular, it doesn't feel like a champ that you gravitate to. Yeah, I've kind of always hated Xin Zhao. Last split, when he was meta, I hated playing it. This split, it hasn't been meta, but I haven't played a single Xin Zhao scrim in, you know, four months. So I definitely don't like the champ, but uh, we saw the draft, and I looked at my teammates, I was like, I think Xin Zhao's good here, guys. So, you know, <laughs> if, it's, if it's good for the draft, I'll pick it. A lot of people think that I'm just going to play oh. Viego, Poppy, Rengar, but I mean, I'll go first time Xin Zhao in four months. You guys will not know what I'm going to pick, so. And the, and the team had faith. Everybody was like oh, yeah. behind the Xin Zhao train. I hear Dardock to my left say, send it. And I'm like, all right, I'll send it. I'll, I'll, I'll pick it. When Dardock's telling you to send it, I think you send it. I like that. <laughs> also, what was an Arrow's coffee this morning? What, what's going on with that guy? That was an insane performance across that series. 
Yeah, I think uh, something must have been Arrow's coffee because um, I think we're like one minute from um, Champ Select, and, I, and we're all we're all on our computers, and we see Arrow at the door says BRB, and he just walks out of the room. So this guy, he's on another, he's on a mythical journey right now. He's uh, he's on another <laughs> planet, but he, he's playing good, so I'm I'm happy. If something was good in the coffee. We'll, we'll keep we'll keep drinking it. Yeah, chugged a couple cups when he uh, went on his little break right there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's incredible to see everybody come together from Immortals Progressive. The whole team seems to be playing on a much you know tighter page. Everyone's stepping up in big moments, so it's awesome to see that. And amid you know rumors, rumblings of possible restructuring from the Immortals uh, organizational side, how how do you as a player? Focus. You know, this is a big tournament, the biggest tournament for Academy players of the year. How do you and the team just make sure you stay focused on this event, your next opponents coming up? Yeah, I'd say as a player, we, uh, we don't really try to look into the uh, the org uh, stuff going on. Um, you know, org is at our back. You know, we, we, we have computers to play on and, uh, and uh, I mean, they do what they need to do. So we're just uh, focused on trying to get as far as possible and trying to get uh, top four for, the, I think, the third split in a row. Immortals has gone top four. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, Immortals has always been an org that I feel like people underestimate. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's Immortals. are going to be seventh or eighth. But then we always just happen to be top four. So, I mean, I don't know what that means. But uh, I think people have to kind of wake up a bit and uh, realize that the org and, and the team is a lot better than they think. Mm-hmm. I mean, the crazy uh, triple uh, amateur teams to get to this point that you had to go through. Now your first actual academy win uh, in Proving Grounds. So, again, cool stuff to see Immortals leveling up. But you mentioned top four. In order to get there, your next opponent is Team Liquid Academy. Uh, this would be your rematch from, you know, summer 2021 where you beat them in the finals. That was a big moment for you there. How are you feeling going up against them to just even punch into that top four this split? See, the thing is, like, they won last split, but they don't realize, like, last split they were in the, the winner's bracket, right? I don't think they ever got knocked out of the winner's um, thing, mm -hmm. if I'm yep, thinking correct. correct. The thing is, like, I have 100% win rate against TL when they're in the loser's bracket. So, last time they were in the loser's bracket, and I was 100 Thieves, they didn't win. So, I mean, it could, you know, we'll see how that goes. Okay, I like it. Uh, also, 100% win rate now, or I guess... I, I guess no longer a 0% win rate against previous roommates, right? Because you just had a chance yeah. to go up against Meech, your roommate currently. So do you have a message for Meech? Uh, may maybe condolences for him for now on broadcast before you see him later today? Uh, I mean, I'll see you at home. Get ready for some crazy shit talk and... Uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Chad. Don't know what that means, but best of luck with that, and uh, wish you luck for Beach as well. Thank you for stopping by, and best of luck going into prep for Team Liquid Honda. Thank you. All right, with that said, we'll bring back out the cast.